So December 2024 mark two years since I'd had solar and a home battery installed at my house in the northeast of England. So much has changed in the world of solar and renewables during that time. So today I'm going to be talking about whether I would still install solar in 2025. I'll also discuss some of the things that I personally would have done differently and also some considerations that you should take if you're looking to get solar installed yourself. As well as that, I'll also be looking at how much money my solar panels have made and saved me over that two years, and when I can expect the system to fully pay back as well. Stay tuned for more. Hi everyone, I'm Danny V Solar, and on this channel you can follow my journey all things solar, renewables, electric vehicles, and much more. Make sure you subscribe to follow me on this journey and give this video a like if you find it useful. In this video I'll be talking about my solar panels and home battery that I had installed in December 2022. So let's start by taking a look at what I actually had installed. UCS Renewables installed the system for me and they're a company local to me. I'll include their details in the description below and they fitted 16 Trina 395 watt black solar panels now my house roofs faced east and west and I had six panels installed on the east facing roof and 10 panels installed on the west facing roof. I sometimes get a little bit of shading in the deepest of winter from my neighbour's house but generally it's not too bad. And the reason I installed the solar panels on both roofs was to try and match my usage pattern. So I had six panels on the east facing roof that were designed to match my morning usage and then the 10 panels to match the evening usage and then most of the time I'm out of work during the day so it seemed to fit well. In reality though, that's been much less important than I thought it would be, and I'll explain why in the, later in this video. I paired the panels with a Give Energy 9.5 kilowatt hour Gen 2 battery, which at the time was actually a bit oversized for what I needed, but has provided me some additional flexibility as we move the house away from gas and move everything towards electricity. So future proofing was always in mind when I had this system installed. I also had a 5 kilowatt Gen 1 hybrid inverter installed to connect everything together. So how much did the system generate in its first two years? Well on screen now you can see the generation for both 2023 and 2024. We're up to a grand total now of nearly 10 megawatt hours of solar generation, which blows my mind in many ways for an east-west array in just two years. Whichever way your roof faces, this video that I made discusses which is best when relating to east-west or south solar generation. So make sure you check that out after you watch this video. And as you can see from the table, I've highlighted the best months from each of the two years and generally 2024 was considered a pretty bad year for generation overall, with lots of cloudy days and the first seven months for my solar install were in fact better in 2023 versus 2024. The end of the year got a bit better in 2024 and in particular we had two cracking months in August and October and actually the generation only ended up around 150 kilowatt hours difference between the two years. So not a massive difference in the grand scheme of things. The expected generation is from a really useful website called PVGIS. I'll link this in the description, but it does a pretty good job of predicting solar generation based on your location in the world and the orientation of your roof space or your floor where you want to install solar. Interestingly, PVGIS predicted that I would get a big dip in generation in June versus May and July. I can only assume that this is due to the heat on the panels when the sun's highest in the sky in June, which can cause some inefficiencies. In reality though, we've not seen this in our generation figures, and June's generation has been the best across both 2023 and 2024. I'm curious to know if we could hit one megawatt hour of generation in June if we had a really sunny month. Let's hope we find out this year. This chart shows the expected generation and then the monthly generation across 2023 and 2024 and really highlights the differences in summer versus winter generation. The grey colour represents the expected generation, green is for 2023 and blue is for 2024. So as you can see we had a swing from just generating 59 kilowatt hours in the whole of December versus 800 kilowatt hours in June. So this is a slight downside to having an east-west array. South facing arrays generally do better in winter. And even on the sunniest of days in winter, a south facing roof can still generate quite a lot. But still, east and west does cover quite a lot of winter usage and definitely worth having. And it more than makes up for it in spring and summer as well. So what's changed in the two years since I had my solar system installed? I don't think it's an understatement to say a lot has changed in the world of solar and renewables during this time. 
One thing that has remained the same over this time is the rising bills. Energy prices had rocketed just before I had my system installed and they've remained high since that time. And just in the last few weeks, Martin Lewis has announced that he expects prices to rise again. And whilst this does reduce the amount of time it takes my solar system to pay back, I do feel for those that are still struggling to pay bills. But many things have changed and this is what makes it difficult to predict payback. Therefore, I would suggest that this shouldn't be the only metric or measure that you use when considering whether to install solar and a home battery. Of course, technology moves on, and whilst 395 watt panels, which I have installed, was the norm a couple of years ago, now we're seeing five and even 600 watt panels become the norm, and available for really cheap. And while some of this is simply down to larger panels, the efficiency of the panels is slowly improving over time too, and prices are basically halved in that time as well. The advice I always gave when I had my system installed was to install as many panels as you can fit on your roof, and this probably applies even more so now. If you've got the scaffolding up, it makes a lot of sense while it's up there to get as many panels installed to ensure that you get maximum generation for just a fraction more cost. And that's assuming that your inverter can handle the additional load, of course. And speaking of inverters, battery and inverter offerings have improved massively over the time as well. Although the Give Energy Gen 2 hybrid inverter was available at the time when I had my system installed, I couldn't get it due to shortages, so I ended up going for the Gen 1 instead. I kind of regret not waiting for the Gen 2, as the extra capacity would have been useful, and now there's even a Gen 3 out, with more capabilities, greater throughput and much more features overall. The world of battery supplies has changed a lot during that time as well. I remember researching when I got my system installed, and there was only a few battery supplies available, Give Energy, Tesla, My Energy, and a couple of others. When I went to a recent solar show, there was hundreds of stalls, all advertising batteries. Some names that I'd never even heard of before. But still, it's those original ones that are still around and doing a good job. And whilst we haven't seen major uptake of V2X yet, I think this is only a matter of time before this becomes mainstream. Energy tariffs have also changed massively during this time as well. I cannot emphasize enough just how important the tariff that you're on when you have solar and battery installed is. I currently use Octopus Energy as my supplier. I've always been impressed with their innovative tariffs and personally the customer service for me and those I speak to has been second to none. If you'd like to join Octopus who have recently won the best energy supplier title for eight years running, then it would be great if you could use my referral code that's on screen now and also listed in the description as well. If you do use this, you get 50 pound added to your account when you join and it allows you access to great tariffs such as Intelligent Octopus Go and that means that if you drive an electric vehicle you can charge it up empty to full for less than £5. I also get £50 added to my account as well which goes to support the channel so thank you to everyone that's used my code so far. When I first had my solar and home battery installed many of these tariffs that are available now just did not exist. Cozy, Flux and Intelligent Octopus Flux did not exist when I had my system installed a couple of years ago and the tariff you're on can massively affect the payback time as well. I did a video here that talks about the differences that being on a different tariff can make to your overall payback, so make sure you check that out as well. Another thing to consider with a solar install is the amount of export that you'll get for sending energy back to the grid as well. Whilst you can use much of your solar array to power your home or charge your battery or your car, a lot of it can be exported back to the grid. And this is another area that's changed a lot in the last couple of years. When I first signed up to get paid for export, I was only getting 4.1 pence per kilowatt hour for everything I sent back to the grid. Now I'm getting 15 pence per kilowatt hour, so nearly four times as much. And whilst it'd be interesting to see what happens longer term with export payments, I do expect these to go down over time as renew more renewables come online. It'd be interesting to see what happens in the meantime. So what would I have done differently with my install? Well, I've touched on this a little bit, but I think one of the things would have been waiting for the next generation of the inverter to be available. Whilst as an early adopter, there's always the next thing coming out. If the load's high sometimes in our house, if we're say boiling the kettle and we've got the washer on at the same time, the extra load can pull from the grid. And whilst this is minimal costs in reality, the extra capacity would have been useful that the Gen 2 inverter would have given me. The other thing I think I would have done differently would have been have more panels on my west facing roof and probably not even bothered with the east facing roof. Whilst it made sense at the time, now there's a number of reasons I probably wouldn't have done this. One of the reasons is because I have an electric vehicle, so I charge that overnight on the cheap off-peak rate, and I also charge my home battery as well. So that means first thing on the morning, my battery is basically full, and I don't really need the morning sun 
as everything runs off the battery anyway. The west facing panels come into their own in the afternoon sun and if I'd had more panels on that roof, first of all it would have made the front of the house look a bit neater and secondly it would have been exporting back to the grid at the right time when the grid needs to power the most. Tariffs such as Octopus Flux come into their own here, offering higher export rates between 4 and 7 p.m. daily. Also installing panels on my west facing roof only would have saved a bit on scaffolding costs. Not a major one, but certainly something to consider. So what else is coming up for 2025 and what plans do I have for my home and the channel as well? Well, I've heard a lot of people say that once you get either solar or uh, EV for example, that becomes a gateway drug to electrifying everything else in your house and that's certainly been the case for me. Once you buy one thing, the rest just starts to make sense and overall it saves you money when you're on the right tariff and making the most of your solar system and battery. Since I had my solar panels and the home battery installed, I've since then purchased an electric vehicle as well and the Octopus tariff that I'm on makes running my Tesla so so cheap. Yes, yes, I know Elon. And if you watch some of my monthly stats videos, you'll see that I've gone from spending around about £160 in diesel for my old BMW to now spending just around £20 a month on fuel to do the same miles. I'm also getting a heat pump installed this month, so make sure you subscribe to my channel to follow that journey and see how I get on with that. And that will mean the only thing that's left running on gas in my house is the gas hob, so I'll also look to replace that at some point this year. Get the gas capped off and that'll hopefully save me around about £100 on gas standing charge as well. This is a really exciting milestone and something I've been looking forward to for a while, so it's great to see it happening. So now I'm going to look at the part that you all really want to know about and that's the payback of the system. And whilst my electric vehicle and heat pump will muddy the waters a little bit trying to calculate this, I have done the best to track how much my system has made or saved me in that time over the two years. And I think you'll agree it's quite impressive. I always compare my figures to the standard flexible tariff and whilst you could argue that I would have been on an EV tariff now since I have my electric vehicle, I think the flexible tariff provides a good option to compare it with as a baseline. So if we look at where we are at, last year we got off to a great start due to a combination of higher bills meaning greater savings and the saving sessions that were quite lucrative throughout 2023 as well. 2024 bills did drop slightly meaning less savings and the saving sessions were certainly not paying as much throughout the end of 2024 which meant a lower payback of around £1,000 versus around about £1,500 the year before. And I was also on the Octopus Flux tariff in 2023, which paid that higher export rate during 4 to 7 p.m. However, when I bought an EV, it made more sense to move to Intelligent Octopus Go, as overall, I'd, lo I'd lose out on some of the export rate. I would actually gain more by being able to charge my EV at that cheap seven pence per kilowatt hour rate overnight. But overall, we're still on track with my original estimate of a payback time around about seven to eight years. And with bills continuing to rise, this looks like currently maybe seven, eight, nine years may be achievable right now. However, as I mentioned earlier, lots has changed in this time, and I'm sure a lot will continue to change as time moves on as well. So that leads me onto the question as to whether I would install solar in 2025. As I mentioned, I'm sure you have your own reasons for wanting to install solar and some of them may not be financial only. For me, payback was clearly part of it, but wasn't the only reason. Reducing my bills and therefore my monthly outgoings was part of it. I also wanted to do my bit for the environment as well. And I also love new technology and the world of solar comes with a whole new world of technology and apps. So that was great. As well as that, I also wanted to be less reliant on the grid and the fluctuations in price. And that gives me and my family protection from any price rises. I'm hopeful that when I get my heat pump and my second Give Energy battery installed as well, that this will only help the payback. And what excites me the most is what happens after the system is paid back. From that point on, everything is profit, meaning low household bills. And whilst there may be hardware to replace between now and then, hopefully it continues to last as well as it has done so far. So would I recommend getting solar in 2025? Absolutely yes. Everyone's situations are very different to one another and it's so important that you do your own calculations for your own usage patterns as well. However, with bills continuing to rise, I would certainly recommend installing solar for yourself if you can afford the initial outlay. In some cases, just solar or just battery may work better for you, so it's important you find a good installer and they'll be able to give you the right advice and help you through the process. 
get a number of quotations, see who feels the best and go from there. Hopefully this video was useful for you. If you did find it useful, please give it a thumbs up. And also, as mentioned, subscribe to the channel to follow me on my heat bump journey as well. Thank you to everyone that has continued to watch my videos. Like, subscribe and comment. It's all really, really appreciated. And hopefully the videos are continuing to create value for you as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.